left Mauritius when I was 18 with the intention of never coming back for many reasons. And one of them was that I didn't much like being a girl in Mauritius. I understood from an early age that being a man carried huge advantages. But it is sometimes easier to run away than it is to confront. Five years back, a cancer scare caused a shift in my life, a pause. Until that point, I had been too busy in a leadership role at the University of Nottingham to notice a lump. My children were six and four years old at that point. Now, this tumor was discovered by pure coincidence. I had emergency surgery. I was very lucky. And three years ago, I got the all clear. But this marked a turning point in my relationship with feminism, from theory to action. And one conversation resonates until now for me. I was speaking to one of my postgraduate Indonesian students on campus. She had just completed her course with us, and I asked her, what next for you? She said she was, of course, taking everything she had learned from the bigger world, and she was going to take that home to help build a better world back there. Now, here is a lady who wanted to invest of herself in a place that needed her feminist action the most. She then asked me the rather abrupt question of, when are you heading home? I had been away for 21 years by then. But my aspirations changed. They were no less ambitious, and in fact, they were perhaps even more ambitious, because the minute you realize that had it not been for that coincidence, you might not be here, then from that moment onwards, the rest of your life becomes, in football terminology, extra time. For me, Every minute means something. And this is one of the most empowering experiences I have ever known, and I am grateful for it. So, I resigned, and I headed back home to be an agent, and not someone who runs away. I came back home to be an actor and not a Facebook commentator. Since my return, I have been building bridges between the stories of international women and the stories of local women. Because I have learned that we serve others best when we allow ourselves to know who we are. So I have reconnected with my own local history. Therefore, my first feminist legacy goes back to the 16th of June, 1695, when Mauritius was a Dutch colony. Two women slaves, Anna of Bengal and Espérance, would plan with two men the first ever act of slave rebellion in Mauritius. They planned a very complex coup, and they set fire to the Dutch fort. 
This act of rebellion would shake the colonial establishment to the core with fear. Here is a key point in our history where two men, two women, stood fearlessly to fight for the only two things ever worth fighting for, freedom and dignity. Let us trace broadly the different waves of feminism across the world to understand where we are today, but also to define where it is we want to go from here. First wave feminists want us the right to vote. In the end, at the end of the 19th century, beginning of the 20th century, the suffragettes led that struggle for us through Emmeline Pankhurst as a catalyst. And today, across the world, women have the right to vote. Second wave feminists in the 1960s won us the right to work outside the house. It is associated with Betty Friedan as one of the game changers in feminist thinking. And with the advent of the birth control pill, women earn the right to control their bodies and to control their sexuality. With this period is the association of the, the bra burning myth. Rebecca Walker in the 1990s would pioneer third wave feminism. And this third wave would concentrate on gender-based violence, and would seek to give a voice to those women still silenced by the mainstream. And this is obviously an ongoing process. So here is where we are today in the current fourth wave. Families across the world are working across all fronts at the same time. So the ecological movement, equal pay, the financial crash, politics. They are demonstrating the interconnectedness of all structures, and they are using the internet for mass communication. If technology has given a boost to this fourth wave of feminism, it has also fragmented it. So today, the feminist movement faces challenges from within. In 2013, we saw Twitter storms around two of our leading feminists in the world. And it is sometimes difficult to see how some of the angry debates online are actually leading to transformational political action. It is in this context of fragmentation that I am advocating today for a fourth wave feminism that is about bridge building across the highest humanitarian, spiritual, and political levels. We have seen one such powerful example in this extraordinary human being, education activist, children's activist, women's rights activist, the youngest ever Nobel Prize winner in the world, Malala Yousafzai, for her incredible pledge to make education available and accessible to Pakistani girls and worldwide. More recently, we have seen on TED Talk itself, Zara Langi, the co-founder of the Libyans, Libyan women's platform for peace. This lady lobbied for Libyan women to vote and to run in the first ever elections in Libya in 52 years. And the results were that 17.5% of the seats were won by women. Here are two women, two individuals, 
investing of themselves, not in Twitter fights, not in men bashing, but investing in themselves in meaningful action that has the potential to change the course of history. 21st century feminism is not a virtual game. It involves investing of ourselves in the biggest, the most daring, the most impossible dreams like feminists of the past waves have done. Because we remember, because we believe, because we love, because we want to co-create the future. It is not enough to contest. It is our responsibility to put ourselves out into public and political roles to build. I stood as a candidate in the elections in Mauritius in 2014 without the safety blanket of mainstream parties without the support of powerful men. I stood because I wanted to voice out. I stood because I wanted to claim my place as an actor in the political process, the realm of men. I ran because I believe in transforming political discourse from sexual comments that disgrace women and therefore disgrace our humanity into a discourse of construction and empowerment that inspire young men and women. I ran as a form of political protest against the running of a republic as if it were a monarchy that belongs to a few families. I ran because I choose to remember our history. I choose to remember how we came to these lands through various waves of colonization. I choose to remember what we went through to earn the fundamental rights and freedoms that allow me to speak to you today. Worldwide, the glass ceilings will not smash by themselves if we keep silent and if we stand by as mere observers. It is when we voice out publicly that we communicate for impact and we communicate for change. It is when we engage in meaningful action that we act as catalysts. Women have had, and women have, many reasons to be angry. There was a time for humiliation, and yes, there was a time for rage. But we have gone past these points. We have come a long way. And now we will need the men to meet us halfway on this bridge. Only then can we claim our rightful place as co-architects with men to create a space that is safe, that is nurturing, that is sustainable for future generations. 21st century feminism is a bridge that we build together towards our enhanced humanity. 21st century feminism is a shift of consciousness that as men and women, we are not just born in the world, but that worlds are born within us. So here is a question for every single young man and woman in this audience. It is a question that was put to me five years ago by my student. It is a question I am most grateful for because it is a question that turned my life around. Whatever your background and whatever your gender, there is a legacy that allows you to be here today. 
Whichever bridge you choose to build today will determine the future. So on this journey of feminism as a bridge building exercise to our enhanced humanity, what next for you? Thank you.